Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Falmo, and what I'd like to do today is spend uh, just about five minutes in a review for you. This is a video for uh, healthcare professionals, whether you be a vestibular therapist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, a um, neurologist, uh, ophthalmologist, uh, and so forth, uh, a review for what to look for visually with a patient of yours that has suffered a concussion. Uh, Post-concussion syndrome patients, uh, studies have shown about 40% of those patients suffer some, from some visual issue. So I'm going to show you four tests that you can do very simply in about two minutes in your office and that will tip you off as to whether we have a visual issue or not. Uh, quite simply in their history, these are patients that you ask, do you suffer from diplopia? Diplopia can be as simple as when you hold up a fixation pen or target, the, if you question the patient closely, they will say that they get a shadowy image aside from it that they didn't used to see. That would be diplopia. Diplopia might occur at near. That's most common but it can also occur at intermediate, which is about computer distance, or distance when they're driving. These patients in their history, if you ask them, very likely will also say that near point tasks, reading, typing, laptop or computer work, or any other detailed near vision work, really exacerbates and worsens their headaches. And these patients are also frequently photophobic. So be sure you, you get a good history first. Uh, the four tests that I'd like to show you, very simply, you do in your office probably every day. In each of these tests, you're always going to be on the aware for nystagmus that may occur. The first test that I have them do is just fixate at my pen and we're going to do pursuits or an extraocular motility test. They're going to fixate on my pen. I would, of course, ask them, is the pen single? Is it clear? If they're a presbyopic patient over the age of 40 and they wear reading glasses or bifocals, have them place those on their face. And I'll just have them fixate on the target. I'll be about 18 inches from the patient and I will move the target smoothly and slowly from left to right in a horizontal fashion and then up and down on both their right gaze and then again in their left gaze. You're going to look for any choppiness in their ocular movements. You want those to be very smooth but any choppiness is a red flag and you're going to ask them in any of the positions of gaze did they have diplopia. So that's ocular pursuits. The second thing that we would do is take two fixation targets, a white pen and a black pen, for example, hold them apart and do saccades. What you would say is, I'd like you to look at my white pen. Now switch over to my black pen, back to my white pen, follow my white pen, now back to the black pen, to the white pen, to the black pen, follow my black pen, again to my white pen, the black pen, and the white pen. Mainly you're going to look for two things here. Accuracy of their saccades. You want to make sure they don't have overshoots and undershoots. And again, nystagmus. The third test you'll do is the near point of convergence. They would again fix them, eight, fixate on my pen approximately 18 inches away. I'm going to bring it in towards their nose and you're going to simply ask them when they begin to see double. They should get normal would be a, a convergence with single vision within about two inches of their nose. Anything further out could be a convergence insufficiency, 
which is the most common finding visually in post-concussion syndrome if they had visual symptoms. So, so far you have the pursuits, horizontal and vertical, looking for smoothness. You have the saccades, where they jump back and forth, again looking for accuracy, ruling out nystagmus. You have the near point of convergence, which should be able to get into about two inches. Often, if this is a strain, you'll see nystagmus here. And lastly, you can do a cover test. You hold a fixation point at about 16 or so inches away, and you cover one eye at a time. And as you go from covering your left to the right and back again, you watch their eyes to see if they have any oscillating movements at all. And if they do, that again may be a convergence issue. So you have the four tests. You have the basic history, visual history that is. And uh, those uh, should really help you out as a review and should help you detect probably about 90% of the post-concussion syndrome patients that have visual issues. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to call me on any specific case. I can help you right over the phone, no matter where you're located. I hope this helps.